It's time for the The Douglas Douglas Coleman Coleman Show. Show. Mr. Smooth and Savvy is joined by guests from all walks of life. From the entertainment industry to authors to political and social commentators. The famous and not so famous. The controversial and the light and fluffy. We have it all. Now, here's Douglas Coleman. Okay, please welcome to the Douglas Coleman Show, Diane Bader. Hi, Diane. How are you? I'm great, Douglas. How are you today? Doing fine. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. Actually, thank you for coming back. You've been on before. We looked it up. You were on about two years ago. uh, Uh, Yeah, I was thinking about that today, too. Yeah, it's been a while. 2022. What, What book were you promoting at that point? Do you remember? Oh my goodness! Um, I don't write offhand. <laughs> There's been so many books. Well, I see a bunch of different series here. You've got Wild Blue Mysteries, uh, Gilda Wright, Glitter Bay, and Audra Clemmings. Is that right? Yeah, actually, that one I changed to Sugarwood Mysteries. So that one, yeah, that one had a little bit of a change in titles, but. Um, yeah, and now my newest one is a whole new series, which is uh, AJ, K- AJ Cadell Mystery. So, okay, how many books do you normally put into a series, or do you have a set number that you do? Um, I don't really have a set number. Um, I when I ended off my um, Wild Blue Mysteries, it stopped at number five, but I kind of left little bit of a loophole that I can go back later and and add some more or whatever I feel like doing with it. I didn't want it to completely end. How do you decide when it's over? Do you just run out of ideas or do you have a set, oh, I don't know, storyboard, if you will, saying, okay, we're going to do this and this and this and then that's it? With um, Wild Blue Mysteries, that's kind of what I did is I kind of had an idea of where the story started and where it was going to end up. Um, with some of the other ones, it's just kind of I start writing a story and I keep it as a series because I want to know what happens to the characters next. Um, so the new one is called Written in Stone. It says A.J. Cadell or Cattle. Yeah. Mystery Cadell. one. So yeah. I'm assuming this is the first book. It's a new yeah. mystery. Tell us a little bit about this one. A.J. is a 20-something young woman who... It, she wants to be a romance novelist, and out of the blue, she finds out within the week that, number one, her father, who she thought had died 20 years earlier, is not dead. And number two, she is uh, given a mysterious letter to become a writer in residence on Vancouver Island here in Canada. And uh, both of those actually work quite well together because that's the last place her father was seen alive. And then she discovers that her father is still alive. And when she goes out there, that becomes part of her mission while she's on the island is to find her father and sort out what happened because she has no memories of being a child, let alone being out on Vancouver Island. In the mystery genre, does there always have to be a death? I mean, is that sort of uh, part of the requirement? Not always. It can be things like... um, burglar like robberies and that sort of thing you know any sort of crime will do but murder mysteries seem to be the ones that really draw a lot of people how long have you been writing or how long have you been published i should say yeah okay i've I've been writing my whole life so i have stories i wrote when i was like grade seven um i think it was 2011 2012 when i won a mystery contest actually and my first novella was published and then i signed with my agent around that same time and my first book came out i think it was two years later so it's about 2012 2013 since i've been published and written in stone is actually my 16th mystery novel okay so about 10 years yeah yeah the landscape for writers and authors has changed dramatically over the years. Yeah. Do you have any advice for, I'm assuming that when you were were published, that there wasn't this big uh, self-publishing avenue to go to. 
if it was, it was in its infancy, I would think, yeah? It was, and and I mean, there's still a lot of publishers who, the publisher I was with actually would look down on anybody who had self-published, they wouldn't even give them a second look. And um, there was a lot of things that went on behind the scenes that I went, you know what, <laughs> I'm going to go that route, because uh, I, I left there quite unhappy and thinking that I can do a lot of this on my own anyway, so why do I need the middle person? Nowadays, being self-published is not, does not carry the same stigma that it did early on. And now there's so many places out there who are more than happy to help you with your money and, <laughs> and get you up there. But I found when I changed from being traditionally published to self-published, uh, by then I had a lot of friends who were self-published. It's quite an easy transition because I have a lot of people to lean on and say, hey, do this, try this, do this. And this is what works for them, and it might not work for everyone. So I, I'm still doing my um, trial and error and <laughs> seeing what works, And but I'm, I've enjoyed the whole process. So currently you are self-published? I am. I left my publisher after 10 years back in January, and uh, Written in Stone is my first self-published novel, and it will. all of my other novels will be coming along, and I will be... Re-editing, I'm in that process right now with all that sparkles, and they were getting fresh edits and new covers, and I'll be putting them all back out there over the next probably three years by the time I get them all. So how are you finding it to compare with being traditionally published? A lot more to be concerned about, obviously, because you have to find all the markets and you have to find, you know, there's a lot of similarities as well. Any publisher you're with nowadays, you have to do a lot of your own marketing stuff. You can't just hand it into the publisher and go, okay, well, let me know when it comes out so I can do all the talks and stuff. Um, a lot of them have cut back a lot on marketing stuff. And even over the last 10 years, a lot of marketing, a lot of editing, a lot of those kind of things that made the, I think made my transition that much easier because I already knew half of what I was doing. So once you put a book out, once you publish it, then what sort of marketing do you do yourself? Do you go on, can you schedule your own book tours? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because I'm doing all my own stuff anyways. And even before, there was, there are a lot of opportunities out there. You just have to find them. <laughs> There's um, different book tours and stuff that you can do, particularly with Cozy Mysteries, which is what I write. And they take you more or less on blogs and uh, podcasts, that sort of thing. Or you can do your own, just, you know, it's on your own dime. You're going from venue to venue, library to library, and doing your own book talks and doing different conferences and that sort of thing. I'm actually doing a conference this weekend where I volunteered to do a writing class, which is going to be a lot of fun. I'm sorry, you cut out there. You volunteered to do what? Oh, um, to teach a memoir writing class, which will be a lot of fun. Oh, okay. So how does a self-published author get their books into bookstores? Um, that's more difficult. It just depends on the relationships you have with different bookstores. I've got a few bookstores that I will be able to wiggle into eventually. <laughs> the book just came out, and uh, I'm right in the middle of moving right now, so... I haven't had the same chance to go and do that as I normally would have. But uh, I will be starting to do that more and more over the next couple of months. Well, is it just a matter of talking to the manager of the bookstore? I mean, For the most part, yes. Yeah. Especially with indie bookstores and as well um, things like Indigo, Chapters, those sorts of places. You need to put in the personal appearance and actually talk to the managers and see what they actually do. I know our local one here actually does bring in authors, but they have their own requirements and rules. So each store is going to be different unless they're uh, franchised, like Barnes & Noble. Exactly, yeah. Well, I, the landscape really has changed because I remember, for at least in music, there was no way you could be an indie musician and get your records or CDs into a, ra a record shop. They just wouldn't take yeah. them. You know, you had to come through 
some kind of chain of command um, yeah. through a record label. But, well, I think that's great. I mean, I think if, if that's possible to do now, I think that's fantastic because it keeps... Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it keeps it fair, I think, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, there's still a lot of, you know, you still get a few perks with the bigger publishers and stuff. I mean, they can get you into bigger venues and that sort of thing with your books. And you know, But if you're not a celebrity and if you're not, you know, with one of the big five publishers, those chances, you have to really work hard to get them. Yeah. So this one, Written in Stone, is the first book. Do you know how many there's going to be in this series yet? Um, right now I'm planning three. I've got kind of uh, outlines and, well, not so much outlines. I don't super outline anything, but I have ideas for the first three. And then I'll see where it goes from there. Okay. I see that it was released on February 27th. How is it doing? Have you getting good reviews? Oh, amazing reviews, which just totally blows my mind. <laughs> I've had, I was really fortunate when I was, um, starting with the edits and everything, I sent it to a lot of writing friends who gave me a lot of great feedback as long as well as some really great reviews. So I'm just totally delighted with it. And uh, it's probably the book that I have worked the longest and hardest on <laughs> just because of timing of trying to fill my obligations to my publisher and everything. And um, the setting has changed about four different times for that particular book before I finally settled on keeping it Canadian. And um, Allison actually goes from Toronto out to Vancouver Island, which is a huge adjustment because there's no, not a whole lot out on Vancouver Island. There's smaller cities and that sort of thing. Not nearly as bustling as Toronto. Well, it's not nearly as cold either. Well, it, it varies. <laughs> it varies. Toronto can be pretty hot in the summer. So. Well, that's true. Although every time I've been to Toronto, I've been there in the winter. And ah. I was coming from Boston, and it felt like, I mean, Boston felt like Miami Beach compared to Toronto. Huh. And it just wasn't that far away. But it's something yeah. with the lake. You know? <laughs> uh, it's, it's the humidity that, yeah, because the lake effect yeah. and the, yeah, the wind chill is what gives it that real cold, damp feeling. So, Yeah, it was a bit rough, but I, I enjoyed Toronto. Yeah. I like the city. I mean, the city itself yeah. is a nice place. Okay. I lived about an hour west of Toronto for about 20 years. So, yeah, i gotten to know the area quite well. Yeah. yeah. It was nice in the summer, one, the one time mm -hmm. I went in the summer. But, okay. Well, I think we're going to wind this down. Uh, again, the book is called mm -hmm. Written in Stone, and it was released on February 27th. Do you have a website that you want to give out? I do. Easy peasy. It's just my name, dianebater.ca, C-I-A-N-E-B-A-T-O-R.ca. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was nice talking to you again, and uh, best of luck with the series. I hope it does well. Oh, thank you so much, Douglas. It was wonderful to chat with you again. You're listening to Mr. Smooth and Savvy right here on The Douglas Coleman Show. We'll be right back after these commercial messages. Douglas Coleman's Don't Do a Podcast is a dryly humorous rant about Douglas's pet peeve, the unrelenting torrent of podcasts hitting the web on a constant basis. As technology has put podcasting within the reach of anyone, many wholly unqualified people have taken the plunge. This witty polemic tries to persuade them from broadcasting their drivel using Douglas's brand of sarcastic humor. Now on Amazon, only 99 cents. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers. Don't touch anything. You've got it right where you need it. Tuned in to the Douglas Coleman Show. You heard me. Okay, please welcome to the Douglas Coleman Show, Andy Chang. Hi, Andy. How are you? Good. Yeah, how about yourself? Doing fine. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. It's nice to have you here. So, you are an independent comic artist. Do you do the illustrations as well as the story? Yes, I do both. You do both. Okay. All right. And I see that uh, we're going to be talking a little about Norwood Meadows 
Uh, yes. Okay, and then Lifestyle is a collection of web comics. So web comics meaning it's not in print, it's just on the web? No, it's actually an actual book. It's an actual book, okay. Yeah. What is web comics then? I've never heard that term. Web comic is something that's updated on a regular basis online only. And it's it's abbreviated for this web content, but not in print. Okay, but this one is actually printed. Yeah, it's, it's actually both. I have it on my social media as well as uh, it's in bookstores. Okay, all right. Why don't you tell us a little about it? Is this going to be a series? Yes, uh, the second book is coming out in May. But uh, let me tell you a little about the series. It's a collection of uh, animals that try to survive in, in the modern world as so they deal with real issues. And it's done in a three-panel comic strip format. And it's, it's all, for all ages, it's kind of funny and it's cute. Okay, is this primarily geared to children? Or is it for everyone? Well, it's for everyone because they cover some ideas like technology and social issues. Okay. Uh, how did you come up with this one? What What was the inspiration for this? Uh, I wanted to create a, a a series of comic strips that's kind of fun and it's kind of, it has some deeper meanings to it. And I started in 2004 when I first initially created it and it just kind of grew from there. Okay. Can you give us an example? Yeah, uh, like the character is, uh, is made out of a, a bear called Bob, and then the, his friend is uh, the penguin called Phil. And they're talking about like they need to find a way to earn money. And then he said, you need a resume to get a job. And he goes, what's a resume? And then the, the, the penguin says, it's a detailed list of things you do. And then the penguin says, it's like you work, you sleep, you, you fish. You know, that's his res- resume. All right. W- what else have you done? I did uh, uh, two individual comics called uh, Ad Zero was my first one, and the second one was Adventures of Sniffy. Okay. I- is this what you do for a living, or do you do something else as well? That's what I do. Where are the other ones available? Uh, you can find it online. All I didn't right. go to dis- distribution. I, I was independent on that. I also see something here called Read Furiously. What, what is that about? Refurious is the publisher yeah. for the North Hill Meadow series. So there's two books. The one is called Lifestyle that's available at, at online, as well as the second one that's coming out in May. It's called uh, North Hill Meadow's Moments. Okay. Wh- what is the the purpose of Read Furiously? Is there some kind of a, a motto or something like that? Uh, the, the motto is to co- read constantly. They, they promote reading. Uh, they're a publisher that I, I, I got to know, and they, 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 they published the work for me. Okay. Was there anything else you wanted to talk about? You want to bring up anything? Did we miss anything? No, I just, I've been working on these comic strips, and it's quite fun. I think everybody would like it. And the second one is uh, a longer, uh, so a bigger book, so 100-some pages, which is the first one was only about 70-some pages. Okay, how many do you anticipate are going to be in the Northwood Meadows series? Uh, there's no set numbers. It just depends on how, how the public receives it. It seems to be doing pretty well. It's uh, pretty popular. How long has this been out? Uh, the first one's been out since 2002, 2022, and then the next one is this, this year, May. Do you plan on doing like one every year or no set time? Uh, probably one a year. You said that each of them have some kind of a message. Some, so I see something on here. It says personal quarantine and then webcast. What? Um, yeah, it was talking about the animals that was in the in the uh, in their environment, and then the people were watching these animals, and then they said, "What are they doing? They're watching Netflix." Okay, but I mean, is there is there a point to these t- in some sort of a message to people? Uh, there's no uh, that message. It's just kind of ways that animals live. And then suddenly we take things for granted, and it, it just kind of explores that idea. So it's it's looking at these various situations through the eyes of animals. Is that what it is? Yeah, exactly. Okay. How do, how do you figure that? Uh, it just I, I take on the 
general stuff I, I find on online and I twist the ideas. Do you have animals at home? I used to. Because sometimes watching them, you can get an idea of <laughs> of what they're thinking. I know I have two dogs, and they keep me uh, keep me alert all the time as to trying to figure out what they're thinking and the way that they think. Yeah, I try to incorporate a lot of the modern ideas with with the simplistic animal, you know, instinct. So that's kind of the take on Northwood Meadows. Uh, do you have a website that you want to give out? Uh, I'm on social media with like a. Uh, Twitter, and also on uh, Facebook. Okay, and what are you on? Just your name? Yeah, you just search under Northwood Meadows, and then you'll find the information on me. Northwood Meadows, okay. All yeah. right, well, thank you for coming on the show, and uh, best of luck with your uh, comic series. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm.